Continuing a long tradition of serving the military, over 900 military-connected students are currently enrolled at Golden Gate University. This community consists of a large number of recently separated veterans, but also includes members of the active force, reservists, members of the National Guard, and military family members. And while many of our military students consider California home, the military community at Golden Gate University consists of students from across the nation. Given the university's proximity to the Air Force bases in the San Francisco area, there are also a large number of airmen and women at GGU, but also a solid cohort of soldiers, sailors, Marines, and veterans of the Coast Guard. Military students are enrolled across the full spectrum of academic disciplines at Golden Gate, making up about two-thirds of the undergraduate student body and a third of the population in Golden Gate's Edward S. Agino School of Business. Military students are especially attracted to Golden Gate's graduate programs in public administration, leadership, and project management. Our military population brings the experience and diversity of the military to our university, where they find Golden Gate's flexible, practical programming a perfect fit for students that may also be juggling families and careers. Military students at Golden Gate find supportive faculty, many of whom have military connections themselves and are ready to work with students pursuing the next step in their career journey. Our military students are also served by a group of dedicated staff at the university, including a group of student veteran ambassadors who are sponsored by the United States Veterans Administration. As a result of this support network, military students are overall very satisfied with their experience at GGU and highly likely to recommend it to others. And the future of the military experience at Golden Gate University promises to be even better. Thanks to a grant from the Helen Diller Foundation, the university delivers military-focused services and initiatives to the Helen Diller Center for Veterans of U.S. Military Service. The center now offers onboarding and career coaching to students, as well as military benefits counseling and special events for the military community at Golden Gate University. The center is also reestablishing connections with military installations around the country while engaging leading national veteran service organizations to support the military community at Golden Gate University. The military community at Golden Gate is vibrant, exciting, and growing. Join us. Learn more at military.ggu.edu. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, particularly this day two of the celebration of Golden Gate University and its rich history. Uh, today, we're going to take a, a little bit of a shift. For those of you who were with us yesterday, we talked a lot about uh, the past and all of the previous cohorts of veterans and military-connected students who've passed through this institution. Today, we're going to talk about the current student experience. We have some great discussions teed up. I encourage you to stick around to the end to learn more about the services GGU provides and how you can become part of the story. Feel free to comment through that, throughout today's discussion. Uh, please jump in the comments. Uh, tell us about your branch of service and what brought you here. But first, I'd like to start with a discussion about the military connected students that are currently at Golden Gate and the experiences they have as veterans and students. So building off of GGU's history, today we want to talk about where Golden Gate University is in 2021. Again, you heard some great stories yesterday, and they provide the foundation that we're building upon today for Golden Gate University's next chapter. The key thing to know about today's Golden Gate is that it's still connected to the military population, uh, but is reaching military students at a different phase in their educational and career journeys. Whereas active duty students were once the bulk of Golden Gate students, now the active duty population makes up a minority of the school's military connected student population. We also have a small cohort of those serving in the National Guard and Reserves, uh, but the bulk, as you see here on this chart, uh, the bulk of students have fully separated from the military, and we've got a solid cohort of senior non-commissioned and officers. Those are typically found in our graduate programs, uh, and a very large population of formerly junior enlisted in the undergraduate program. We're grateful that all these groups have chosen Golden Gate, and we're looking forward to meet their specific needs. But as we mentioned in the video prior, right, the military serves worldwide. So where do we see all the vets who end up at Golden Gate? Where do they come from? Now, I'm a little bit biased uh, as an Army guy, um, but here we are, right? We've got half of our students, half our military connected students and veterans at Golden Gate are from the Air Force. Uh, but that's actually pretty cool. 
by national numbers, if you just took the services writ large based on their populations, right, we should have a huge cohort of Army students, then Navy, then Air Force, you know, followed along by the Marine Corps and a little bit of Coast Guard. Uh, but as you know, obviously, California is a huge hub uh, for the Navy, uh, particularly in San Francisco, uh, where we see a lot of Navy and Marine Corps. Uh, but what we do know about Golden Gate is that we're right next door to Beale and Travis Air Force Base, which you can see here on the charts. Uh, and one interesting great thing about that is, is it means that the students at these installations uh, found Golden Gate through the tremendous word of mouth and the reputation of Golden Gate in the surrounding community. One thing we know about our students as well, right? students, when they're coming into school from the military, they're making a big leap. Right? They ha have a lot of options on where to go. Uh, they may not be tied to a specific town, uh, so they can look nationwide. Uh, and that makes, actually makes the decision sometimes harder to make uh, than just, okay, hey, I grew up here, I live here, I'm going to go to this school. Uh, what that means, though, is a lot of veterans rely on word of mouth and reputation when they're looking for a school. Because as you know, if you've applied or looked at schools, you probably got bombarded by a thousand institutions saying, you know, come here, we want you. Uh, so the GGU has been fortunate to have such success in this. And because of that, uh, the GGU student body is richer and more diverse. Uh, we're grateful you know, for those who have found an educational home at Golden Gate, and we're looking forward to seeing uh, the next generation. Today, happy to hear a bit more about our current student body and the services available to our current military connected students. Uh, earlier, I was able to record a great panel uh, with a few staff and faculty currently serving the military connected population at Golden Gate. We'll now transition to that discussion. Uh, so for those listening, uh, stick with us. Please feel free to join the discussion in the chat box. And again, please chime in. The, like the one thing we'd love to hear about is your service branch, you know, where you're coming from and your connection to GGU. Welcome everyone to another day to talk about the Helen Diller Center uh, for U.S. Military Veterans at Golden Gate University. Uh, thanks for joining us and we're excited <coughs> about today's discussions as we look in more depth at what GGU currently offers uh, its military connected students uh, and the kind of services available. You know, as we saw from yesterday's presentations and earlier discussions, uh, Golden Gate has a rich history of serving the military community. Uh, and given the hundreds of students who enroll at Golden Gate every year, uh, there's a lot of expertise uh, within the institution. Today, we're uh, fortunate that we have three folks who have been at GGU for a long time, uh, and they have specifically uh, been serving military veterans uh, during their time at Golden Gate. We're joined today by Peter De Haas. He is the Director of Disability Resources, and he's been with Golden Gate since 2013. Uh, during his time, he's expanded the Disability Resources and Academic Accommodations Program uh, to be more expansive and accessible at the university. He helps students recognize their full potential by reducing barriers on their path to success. He's a tireless advocate uh, for students with all types of disabilities and an ambassador to the university for more accessible practices, equity, and universal design. Welcome, Peter. We also Thank have you. Renee Betts, uh, who's been with us for almost five years. She's currently serving as the school certifying officer at Golden Gate. In other words, she's the person who gets veterans the benefits they've earned. Uh, not always an easy task. And today we're pleased to announce that she just recently took on the position as the president of the Veterans Program administrators of California. So well, congratulations and welcome, Renee. Thank you. Lastly, we're joined uh, by Dan DeVoy. Uh, Dan DeVoy is a former uh, member of the United States Army, uh, but most of you know him and we currently know him as the visiting assistant professor at Golden Gate University School of Law, and more importantly, the director of the Veterans Legal Advocacy Center. Uh, he teaches the Veterans Benefit Seminar course and is well, well versed in veterans benefits laws. Uh, he obtained his JD from Golden Gate University and his bachelor's degree from the University of California, San Diego. So Dan, welcome and thanks all of you for joining us. So I guess, you know, first for, for all of you, I'll open it up and we can, we can go around the room. Um, it would just be, you know, 
for those who aren't familiar with the veterans population uh, and what Golden Gate University offers, can you talk a little bit about what you specifically, uh, the services you provide veterans uh, in your role as GGU? And Renee, I guess we'll start with you as the person that a lot of veterans see as one of the first faces of GGU when they're trying to get enrolled and, and get their education underway. Yes, so I counsel the veterans, um, help them understand what benefits they're eligible for. Um, I walk them through the process of what I need um, to certify them um, with the VA. And I make sure that they get certified so that they can get their paychecks. Yeah, not always an, an easy task. And um, Dan is the Army veteran yourself and someone who now works uh, at the law school specifically uh, on vets legal advocacy. Can you tell us a little bit about, uh, I guess you've got a couple of roles uh, at Golden Gate, but can you talk in general overview of what, what services you provide? Sure. Yeah, so our clinic uh, provides legal services for veterans in the community. Uh, and it's staffed by law students. Some of them are veterans. Uh, so they gain both an understanding of the law that applies to veterans and actual practical experience uh, to serve the legal community. Some of our clients are also GGU students. And so what benefits through the VA system uh, if they've been denied? Uh, so we, we can take their case all the way through the Court of Appeals in DC. Uh, and have been doing this for about seven years now. That's great. A lot of expertise that I want to circle back to and, and discuss in a moment. Um, and for Peter, uh, you know, you've spent a career working on issues of, of inclusion. Um, what do you do now with Golden Gate and what kind of services do you provide that relate to the veteran community? Thank you for the opportunity to be here. We really uh, pride ourselves on making sure that students have an efficient process, uh, getting their academic accommodations and helping them uh, along their path at GGU to find resources outside the university if they need them, helping them in, in particular veterans, helping them connect the dots with some of the supports that they have at Veterans Affairs, um, but really talking them through the process. It's an interactive process and helping mm -hmm. them um, get the supports they need along the way and taking time to really discuss the types of accommodations that they might be eligible for. And um, in particular with, with veterans, uh, just getting the documentation in order that they need to support their need for accommodations, which is generally easier for veterans. So it's, it's nice to be able to help. We, we uh, currently half of our, our, our non-law students are veterans. So it's quite a few. It is. It's a great community, and, and you're certainly important in, in making sure that it, it's fully welcome. Uh, what are the common challenges uh, that veteran students face? And that I guess, you know, Peter, and how um, you mentioned that it's, it's sometimes it's easier uh, for veterans. What makes it easier for them to get some of these services? Is it VA support? And you know, what role does your office play in all of that? Well, I would say now more than ever, veterans are readily self-identifying with some of the, the uh, disabilities that they've incurred in their line of duty. And um, typically I just request the, the, the cover sheet that, that outlines um, their level of disability. So really um, creating a nexus between that, that documentation and some of our our more common accommodations are additional time for exams and quizzes or um, uh, additional time for assignments. So those are the two most common accommodations that we provide, but we also provide um, different technologies that assist students with disabilities as well as other uh, accommodations. That's great. I guess, is this the first time you've worked with veterans here in your Golden Gate University office? Yeah, I would say in my, my, my years of doing advocacy, it's, it's mm -hmm. definitely the largest number of veterans that I've worked with in, in a single kind of mm -hmm. role, for sure. Okay. So I, I'd say the biggest thing, J Jason, is making sure that they make it to our office sooner than later. And I, um, so that's why it's so important to 
make the referral for faculty and staff to, to our office and just encourage them that it's a safe space that they can readily talk about their, their challenges and not feel like they're being judged or shunned because of them. And I'd say that that's one of the biggest barriers is for students uh, actually just making that first step to self-identify with their conditions. Right. And Renee, do you have uh, some of these conversations with, with incoming veterans? Uh, you know, because you're kind of looking at, again, as the first person that touches a lot of these incoming students, how do you kind of navigate you know, the myriad concerns that veterans have as they're approaching you know, enrolling in school, maybe for the first time uh, ever, you know, since high school. Yeah, so I, I definitely am like the first person they really talk to that's geared towards their VA benefits or just coming to school as, um, you know, after separating from the military. So um, take the time to listen and then take the time to walk veterans through kind of the steps they need to do in my office, I've tried to make it as simple as possible for the items that I need, um, just because I feel, feel like they're coming in from being in the military um, and being a civilian. So now they have to um, juggle, you know, a different type of lifestyle. So I try to make it as easy as possible and help walk them through, give them clear directions um, and really sit down and explain to them the benefits that they're due and the way to go about getting them. I also, um, I tend to be a good person to go between the VA and if they're using vocational rehab, the vote counselors um, I have, you know, pretty direct contact with them. So it helps to be able to answer their questions and um, gear them in the right direction. That's great. And so, um both Renee and Peter, you're, you're dealing a lot with the delivery, excuse me, the delivery of uh, various benefits from the Veterans Administration. Uh, and obviously that gets complex sometimes. And I think that's sometimes where Dan comes in. You know, Dan, you probably see some of the more complex challenges uh, facing veterans, some of, a lot of the friction uh, facing them as they get their benefits. I guess if we could back up a little bit, what led you Dan, to really kind of embrace this and and work with the, you know, run the Veterans Legal Advocacy Center. Um, and then beyond, you know, what led you to this, I guess, uh, what do you see the most with the veterans that you help? So what led me to it was that um, I am a veteran myself, and I was just looking to do some pro bono work uh, to give back to the community. And it just seemed like a natural fit to help military mm -hmm. veterans. And one thing led to another, and I met our former dean, uh, Rachel Van Cleve, and from there it branched off, and we eventually opened the clinic in 2014, and I was hired by GGU. Um, but to directly answer your second question, uh, students uh, seeking benefits or difficulties they may encounter with the VA, uh, I would say the top issue that, that could occur would be a less than honorable discharge status that could be used as a bar to receive benefits. Mm -hmm. um, we have people that uh, face discrimination or other policies that uh, reduce their discharge status and then reduce their GI Bill eligibility. Uh, so we take on those cases and upgrade discharges. Uh, and I give students housing, stipends, GI Bill, post 9-11 GI Bill, as you know, is, is huge. Uh, and I think with some of the wonderful people you met today, you can really see that we, we kind of have things set up for veteran students to come in and really hit the ground running uh, and really just focus on academics and do a great job. Yeah. So it's interesting about, you know, you've got this this clinic and you're also using, you know, it's an ability for law students then to help serve uh, and practice their new, you know, their new profession. Uh, for those of us in the military, you know, we, we refer to it as kind of a train the trainer situation. I guess for you, do you get more satisfaction at helping veterans or helping law students, you know, learn more about helping veterans? I guess I would get the most satisfaction out of, of um, watching the students help the client, uh, and the clients are always veterans, uh, and watching life-changing results, uh, watching veterans that could not access VA benefits, uh, now able to access benefits that can help them with housing, help them with paying their bills, help them get a job, uh, things of that nature that they've been denied for so long for no reason, 
uh, no legal justification. Mm -hmm. uh, so the biggest benefit for that for me is watching those students uh, do that work and become an attorney. Now, it's, it's, it's a really cool, uh, great resource for the Golden Gate uh, community, and we're all appreciative uh, of the work you're doing. Uh, what I'd like to do before we kind of close out the conversation is to ask each of you, um, one, what is Golden Gate doing well right now uh, in terms of serving the veteran community? And then what do you want to see uh, us do better as the administration kind of really embraces uh, improving services and expanding uh, what we're providing to student veterans? I think one of the things that uh, is, is a challenge for all students is if they choose to, to live out here in the Bay Area, uh, housing can be a challenge. And so that is one area that um, always we can improve in terms of referrals and resources and finding adequate housing uh, close to campus, close to commute lines, things of that nature. I think GGU is is doing well in, in making uh, the university really accessible for veterans and a welcoming place with its rich history. Um, I think an area that we could we could see improvement that I personally see veterans struggle with is um, sometimes biting off more than they can chew when they're first coming back to the university and and increasing communication with uh, the VA to make sure that if we need to reduce a course load that 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 that's permissible to do so. I'd say that that's one of the biggest challenges I see. Well, it's it's a good. In some ways, a good challenge to have uh, you know, over eager uh, students, but it's great that we've got uh, folks like yourself uh, standing by to help them kind of figure out, you know, what this new role and this new load is. Um, Renee, uh, for yourself, you know, what what have you seen GGU do well? And and you know, if you were uh, able to make some make some changes or help us guide some of the new services that we're going to roll out what would you like to see ggu do better so as far as what we do well um i believe that we have programs that are set up for students that are transitioning into civilian life i think um, we've made accommodations with the um, hybrid program um, the mixed mode and the blended classes so that veterans don't have to come into campus all the time every week um, and that they're still getting their housing allowance um, for San Francisco. So I think that's really great. I love that um, we've been able to um, accommodate the veteran students um, in that way. I think um, the things that I'm hoping that the Diller Center can provide them is a little more counseling um, I tend to do a lot of that because I'm kind of one of their first people they talk to. Um, when they've taken on too much and then they get a debt um, to the VA. So I I'm hoping that there's a little more counseling um, for them and that they understand that, you know, the VA is actually trying to help them. And if not, <laughs> we've got someone who they could talk mm -hmm. to. So that's what I hope to see. Well, that's great. And, you know, I think the, the the main thing we hope folks will take away is that there is a community of support at Golden Gate, and it's not just in terms of uh, doing the basics, but constantly thinking about how to further expand services and support uh, to this community. So to the three of you, to Renee, to Peter, uh, to Dan, thank you so much uh, for all you do uh, and all you will be doing for the veterans community at Golden Gate University in the future. Thanks for joining us. Hello everyone, my name is Joey Garcia, Marine Corps veteran 0307. My name is Dean Ferguson and I am retired from the United States Navy. I'm Vicki Johnson. I am a veteran investor and a 30-year vet from the U.S. Air Force. My name is Keith. I am recently retired from the military after 24 years of uh, active duty service in the United States Air Force. My name is Aubrey Ravenel. I'm retired Air Force. I'm a full-time GGU student taking business management in my fifth semester. I am currently enrolled in the leadership master's program at GGU. 
I'm just finishing up my leadership program and I'll be moving on and doing the financial planning and IOP program. I am currently enrolled in the MBA program at GGU. I'm going for my bachelor's in business management with a double concentration in human resources and marketing. A veteran I serve with who lives in the Bay Area like myself attended GGU. He attended GGU, graduated, graduated with honors, graduated at the top of his class and gave the commencement speech at his graduation. Watching him achieve these things, I was just in awe and inspired by his achievement and what he did. Uh, so inspired me to enroll full time in GGU and seek a higher education like he did myself. As he inspired me, I just want to inspire other veterans that were more than the token veteran that gets out the anything related to PTSD and homelessness, addiction, and anything like that were, were examples. Everything that we've learned in the military and setting the higher standard that we've had for ourselves is something that we should continue to do when we get out. I wanted to continue my education and talking with somebody who was a GGU alumni, he had great things to say about the university and everybody that he worked with. So I was intrigued and I looked into it and here I am about ready to finish my master's in leadership. My husband and I were using our GI Bill benefits and my son decided to go to Golden Gate University and so we decided to go there as well. I used to be stationed at Travis Air Force Base and learned about GGU from fellow military members. I was interested in going back to school for an MBA and obtaining a project management certification and GGU uh, checked both those boxes. I was at 21 years in the Air Force and I was ready to branch out on my own. I had always had a desire to open my own bar, but I didn't know where to start. Um, being that I wanted to own my own business, I had a friend who was familiar with Golden Gate University and told me that they were a school for business. So for me, I, I believe the strengths at GGU and the veteran community are the common bond that we share as veterans and the understanding that we have um, and be able to lift each other up and understand each other maybe more than other students wouldn't. And also accountability, making sure that, you know, our veterans are doing good and that upholding them to the higher standards that we learn in the military and, and keeping each other accountable. Having a bunch of people and students around that you can communicate with that know your background and that can empathize or sympathize with your situation um, makes the transition transition process easier. People are there for you and they, to include the instructors because some of them are veterans as well. No matter what branch of service, rank or job you held, all veterans share the bond of serving our country. And it's always nice to meet fellow brothers and sisters in arms and the GGU community is uh, no different. Just like when we serve, we still hold that we are all in this together mentality. And that definitely comes in handy on some of the tougher assignments. I enjoy reading classroom discussion posts uh, from fellow veterans because most of them contain their military experiences and that's uh, easily relatable. GGU is filled with vets, vets from all branches with different experiences, backgrounds, knowledge. Uh, from my experience, we are a band of brothers and sisters who have each other's backs and we take care of each other. Hello everyone, my name is Marlena Blackman and I'm a benefits optimization coach working at Golden Gate University and I'm also a current student. I began taking classes in 2018 after retiring from 21 years of military service in the United States Air Force. After that, I decided to go to school and get my degree and open my own business. Since then, I've been able to earn my MBA with a concentration in adaptive leadership a conflict resolution certificate, and in the spring of this term, I will add an MA in industrial organizational psychology. So I actually chose to go to GGU because the requirements for me was to only attend class once a week at night, which coincided with my schedule with being able to take care of my kids, something that I hadn't been able to do while I was in the military. I have invited two other students to share their experience, and they are also veterans. I have with me today, Shawit Johannes, who is also an Army veteran, a GGU alumna, 
and a current faculty. I also have Jonathan Banks, who is one of our veteran ambassadors and a Marine veteran. So Shui, let's begin with you. Can you please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your journey at Golden Gate University? Sure. Um, just as you said, my name is Shawit Johannes, and I am an alumna of Golden Gate University. I attended uh, between 2017 and 2018 um, the Masters of Business and Data Analytics um, program. And actually, I am currently taking a certification in HR, so I guess I am a current student as well. And number three, to round it off, I am at Golden Gate University and have just been promoted to assistant dean of the graduate school. So I was in the U.S. Army for a total of six years active duty. I joined less than a year after 9-11, after actually, don't do the math, um, and really enjoyed being in Signal Corps. I was a 25 Romeo, which basically I fixed and operated um, broadcast television and radio equipment. Um, and from there, I was able to um, separate honorably from the military and join uh, the civilian force and doing the same thing. So I, I'm really appreciative appreciative of the U.S. Army for not only the skills that they've given me, but also the GI Bill, which has helped me get my master's. Okay, and what do you like about Golden Gate University? I think first and foremost, they were really easy to get in contact with. Not too many people know this, but I was uh, abroad. I was teaching English in Moscow, Russia at the time. And they were the most responsive, very quick to answer my questions, very quick to um, support me on the VA side as well. And once I arrived, it felt uh, sort of familial. They ensured that um, I hit the ground running and was able to um, succeed. Well, thank you very much, Shawi, for sharing with us your story. And congratulations on your many successes as a Golden Gate University student. Next, I'd like to introduce Jonathan Banks. Hello, I'm Marlena and Shui. My name is John Banks. I've been going to Golden Gate University since 2017. And I wrapped up my undergrad in 2018 in business management. As Marlena stated, I'm a veteran student ambassador and I uh, try to assist the veteran students in, in their day-to-day -day activities at the schoolhouse. I did five years in the Army and 30 years in the Marine Corps. When I retired, I was a director of the Marine Corps Cannoneer School in Fort Sill, Oklahoma. The one thing I would certainly advise is to just get up and do it. Uh, attend school. The benefits are wasted if you don't use them. And the school itself, whether you're a veteran or not, the professors, the faculty, and staff are very accommodating to help you because your day-to-day -day activities may not allow you to uh, focus fully, let's say. And there's, a, there's the staff available to help get you on track. So this is a question actually for the both of you, and I will begin with you, Shui. What, if any, opportunities have you been afforded while being a student at Golden Gate University? Well, a number of opportunities, actually. So when I joined, um, Golden Gate University in 2017, I was part of the first um, class in the analytics program. So being part of the first class, we were able to create the Business and Data Analytics Club, which has actually taken off and we were able to do such things as visit places like Twitch, which is down the street from Golden Gate University. We visited Accenture, which is across the street in the Salesforce Tower. And just recently, um, we had an analytics uh, career fair this past Friday. So um, there are a lot of... Uh, uh, professional opportunities and social opportunities as well. So they, they provide a lot. Yes, absolutely. And just a quick story um, about me. I did have a professor, as you mentioned, who advised me, oh, hey, if you have a little bit of that extra BAH money, invest in uh, Bitcoin. Um, unfortunately, I did not do that. But if you are following the news, you know, Bitcoin is uh, about $50,000 right now. Yes. So, um, yeah. What about you, John? Same question. I have uh, I have mostly taken advantage of the networking opportunities because I'm not from the Bay Area. However, Golden Gate University is a premier adult learning center and that we are, I won't say affiliated, but we certainly have a close relationship with Salesforce, WeWorks, Pinterest, Twitter and all the rest of them that are around here. 
And they know where to go to find quality people, and that's Golden Gate University. And incidentally, one of the things that I do enjoy also is that most of the professors, about 80% are adjunct, and they actually work across the street at all these, uh, in the tech industry. And so they know what they're talking about, and they have real-world experience and applications that teach us uh, very current, up-to-date techniques, tactics, and procedures to be successful. Okay, well, thank you. So again, I would like to thank the both of you for taking the time out of your busy schedules to relate to other students um, at Golden Gate University. As you can see that there are numerous opportunities to attend Golden Gate University, whether it's networking through other veterans, through your professors, Golden Gate University provides an easy way for you to be able to accomplish your goals. As we launch the Helen Diller Center for U.S. Veterans, we want to make sure that you utilize your resources and know that we're always thinking about helping the veterans. What I love about GGU is just the love I got from the city. Um, everywhere I went, I said, you know, from the Uber rides to the to the coffee shops to the restaurants around the corner, they would say, "Oh, you're going to GGU, you know, and you're a veteran." Wow, well, you know, congratulations, good for you, and just that love and support I got from the city. Just being able to walk out into the streets um, from the campus and seeing so many historical places that are very easy to walk to is something that I enjoy immensely. We actually live in Concord, uh, which is about um, a, a, an hour BART ride away. So we really uh, enjoy that. Um, we were able to purchase a place here. That's one of the things we wanted to do with our GI Bill benefits and the GI Bill benefits. The housing allowance is definitely a draw. Well, I was really looking forward to attending some of my classes in San Francisco, but all the classes are currently online due to COVID-19 restrictions. However, my wife attended GGU when we were stationed at Travis Air Force Base, and I would ride with her to the city whenever she attended classes, and I miss that San Francisco energy. The GGU campus is located near great restaurants, coffee shops, and the mall, and my wife and I shared some great times out there, and I look forward to more good times when we're able to attend classes again in person. So going to school at Golden Gate University in San Francisco is one of the coolest things ever. Like the city is awesome. It's very trendy, modern. Um, there's so many new tech companies forming. Um, you have right across the street, you have the Museum of Modern Art. You have street performers and outside of the doors of Golden Gate, there's like so many places to eat. And the BAH is a plus. I've been in my professional career for about 12 years now, and I can say that my time at GGU thus far has impacted me in such a positive way, not only my professional career, but my personal life as well, with the tools and education I've received and, and the people that I've met along, along the way. One of the greatest opportunities that I experienced with GGU is the relationships that you can build with the professors. They're very open to feedback, to suggestions, to just general dialogue about anything, even if it's on topic related to the course that you're in. I've developed relationships with the professors afterwards, um, just through discovery of um, passions about the courses that I'm taking. And I think it's amazing that that kind of rapport can be developed um, between the staff and the students. I can attribute going to GGU that um, we are able to do a financial planning uh, program and take the certified financial planners uh, test at the end of all of this. And um, we want to go on and work with the military. I'm using my GI Bill to attend GGU and the housing allowance has afforded me the luxury of being a full-time student without needing a full-time job. Uh, that additional income definitely helps to cover my family's living expenses. Uh, this situation is a major stress relief because I now have an opportunity to focus 100% of my efforts on academics and mastering the curriculum. The networking opportunities are phenomenal here. They're always having um, like 
programs that offer um, insight on specific business opportunities. I've also had the personal advantage of having friends who've gotten jobs and they're giving me the inside scoop on, you know, new positions opening up in their company. Uh, it's been great, great networking opportunities and um, ways to just accelerate your career and knowledge. There's a lot of fears and unknowns that you have, but don't hesitate and just jump in and do it. Get your education. As my biggest fear going in was that you know, I have been in school for so long that I didn't think I'd be smart enough to to hang with other college students and, and get my work done in time and everything. But here I am in my fifth semester, um, multiple dean's list nominee, and it's been such an amazing journey so far. So don't be afraid to do it. Start as soon as you can. It will change your life for the better. Just be patient. Take your time. It takes a little while just to comprehend the process and the system design. But once you once you breathe, once you understand it, it flows really well. Uh, it's very easy to comprehend and you will enjoy learning from GGU. The biggest advice that I would give fellow students is to do the best, see what you can fit into, find a program. The instructors are great. Uh, my advice would be to use all the organizational skills and structure you learned in your military careers. Uh, we all have obligations like family and jobs, and it can be easy to place school on the back burner when you no longer have to attend in person. However, uh, I've found that utilizing time blocks uh, keeps me on track with my classes by ensuring I have designated time reserved specifically for my educational requirements. Take your time and figure out who you are. Um, figure out what you want to become. You have dedicated a lot of yourself to others and that's pretty much guided your path for a while. So make time for you, learn you, love you, give yourself a chance to breathe, then set your goals and follow your path. Don't forget to let others help you. Here at GGU, there's always someone who's willing to help. Man, thanks for joining us for that. That was uh, that was pretty cool. It was great to hear from so many current students about their experiences while they're here. The takeaway I got is I think we're all dying uh, to get actually back to San Francisco and on campus. Um, Marlena, it's great to have you here. You, you know, hosted a great panel uh, with a lot of the folks who are helping uh, student veterans at GGU. You know, you're here now, you're, you're a student, you're about to graduate, uh, but now you're also working to help other students. I mean, what, uh, what are you looking forward to and, and you know, why are you so engaged with GGU? Yes, so thank you, Jason. And um, as you mentioned, so before, when I missed out on that Bitcoin uh, run, when I was offered the opportunity to help veterans, I decided I needed, that is something I did not want to let pass. So I'm super excited to be working with a team that's aimed at focused on our veterans and how we can help them. And um, as the benefits optimization coach, that is my whole goal is to see where we can help our students and any academic resources that's available to them. So I'm super excited to be able to do that. Well, that's great. So we clearly have a lot, a uh, lot to do and a lot to look forward to. For everybody who joined us today, uh, thanks a lot. Um, if you didn't, you know, let us know who you are. Uh, feel free again to drop your uh, service history and your connection to uh, GGU into the chat there. Uh, if you have any specific questions, send them our way or send them to the email, the Diller Center at ggu.edu. Uh, it's there in the chat as well. Uh, more particularly, hope you all can join us tomorrow. Uh, invite your friends, because tomorrow we'll be talking about some of the future opportunities at GGU, uh, how Golden Gate can grow, uh, and how it can better serve uh, the veterans and military community. Thanks for joining us today, and we hope to see you tomorrow.